<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. It's Biggs. Now, it's been a while since we've really done it, like kind of a real update on what's happening with all the isopods. They're still not really into the room yet, but uh, they're still out there. We're still doing all the morning, the maintenance on the weekends. But today, I thought it'd be kind of cool if we just literally went bin to bin and highlighted and looked at each one of them and see how they're doing. We're not going to do any maintenance unless it's absolute emergency. That's all been taken care of. But let's take a quick look, see how every one of these species are doing for us. So let's do it. First up is the classic Armadillidium Montenegro. Now this culture has been thriving for me for a long time to the point that it's really going to be needing to be kind of redone. Uh, I've got so many of them, the population's exploded. And the thing with that is then the media starts to acidify. And you can see this is almost all substrate now. Right down, there's no leaf litter anymore, it's mostly mud. So. These guys are going to be in a desperate need of being completely redone right away. But an outstanding isopod, super easy to care for. Armadillidiums overall are just amazing, amazing animals. Well, the next one up is going to be kind of funny because this is honestly, this is just dwarf whites. These are often ones that are used for uh, bioactive environments. This is Trichorhina tormentosa. And uh, so the, the funniest part about them is this is probably the isopod that produces the least for me. Now, they do like it a little bit warmer than a lot of other isopods. And maybe that's part and, part and parcel as to why. I just keep them all, all my isopods pretty much the same sort of environment. Uh, you know, uh, when they when they go back into the room, the ones that require warmer will actually go on the bottom because we have heated floors. But nothing exciting for these guys. Let's move on to the next. Now, when we talk about a species that is overly prolific, this is one species that to me, I just, it, I cannot keep them in check. They reproduce at such an exceptional rate. And this is Armadillidium granulatum. They are absolutely packed in here. This is my heaviest culture because it is completely filled. The entire culture. This used to, this is the moist area, the sphagnum moss area, and they're all there, just piled on top of each other. So this culture is in desperate need of being reset. It should have been reset a while ago. And if I do not reset this culture, in a short period of time, it runs very, very high risk that this culture could crash. So this culture is going to get a reset probably this weekend. Yeah, it's very, very heavy. It's almost filled, just solid frass. But it's a unique and it's a cool species, just the same. This is one of our favorite species of both mine and Paisley's, mainly because they roll up into that tight little ball. This is a true armadillo officinalis, and this is the one that comes from the variant known as Greece. Just an absolutely outstanding pill bug. They were a little bit slower to get started for me, but once they took off, there was no stopping them. And as you can see, they're not a little isopod. There he is, looking up at us. Saying, leave me alone. Armadillo officinalis. Next up is a relatively new addition to us. This is one that we brought in on uh, one of our reptile orders. It's a very, very common species, but it was a species that I did not have myself, and I liked how I could tie them in on the fish side. This is Porcilio scaber koi, and it's nice to see that they're finally producing. I started out with 10 individuals, all sorts of different colors, and we're getting all sorts of nice patterns now. And I also see right there, I got the same thing as Wally, and that's my fault. Uh, I, uh, when I did get this culture, it came in soil, and... Uh, 
A smart person would have not used that soil, would have individually hand-picked the isopods out. But I didn't do that. I dumped that container and the soil mix into my container and thereby introducing potentially something that's going to be more of a pest or a nuisance. Won't hurt the isopods, but it may be a nuisance down the road. Next up is one of the beautiful Spanish isopods. This one is Persilio ornatus high yellow. And you can see where they get their name. This is one of my ab first original three isopods. When I first started, this was one of my first three. And I've had them for several years now. They produce very well. And again, uh, being a Spanish species, it does like it a lot drier than a lot of the other species. But if you can keep them, they can be fairly rewarding. Ornatus, high yellow. Now this is probably, it, it, in captivity, it's probably one of the most prolific species that any isopod keeper can have, or any of the many forms of Porcelio lavis. This one happens to be my daughter Paisley's culture of Porcelius lavis dairy cows. And uh, we have a large herd of them. <laughs> prolific, easy to keep, ideal starter isopod. This is a other brand new culture. This one I've only owned for just over a month. This is Armadillidium uh, Espanoli, also called SP Marbleized. You guys would have seen when I did the unboxing on them. There's one there. I, since I'm adding them in, I have not seen many of them. So there we are looking there and we found one. But that doesn't mean they're not there. They could be buried down in the substrate adapting, acclimating, you know, little changes in their environment from where they were. I'm sure they'll be fine. We keep checking on them every once a week, doing our maintenance. We'll see what they look like down the road. Next up is another variant of the Armadillidium klugii. And this one, just as prolific as the other, this is Armadillidium klugii, and this is the Dubrovnik variant. Now, if you look at the spots on their, on their back, you'll notice that the middle row is white. In, in Montenegro, the other one, that middle row is yellow. And uh, still an absolutely very beautiful species. And as you can see, very prolific. And this environment is desperately in need of being uh, reset as well. I've been kind of holding off on doing a lot of the resets because as you guys know that they're going to be going all into the new room and we're going to be installing new bins for almost everybody. So I've been kind of holding off thinking that I can basically reset everybody all at once when I go and do that. But uh, we're kind of walking a fine line here. We got to be careful that uh, they don't go too far and that we end up having a culture crash on us. So, Armadillidium klugii Dubrovnik. Next up is another one of my absolute favorites, one of the beautiful giant Spanish isopods. These ones are magnificent. This is Porcilio magnificus. Look at the uropods on that giant male. And what I mean by giant is they're not little. He's almost all of two, two and a bit inches in size. Now some of the larger Priscilios, like these guys, Hoffman, Sagai, Bolivaris, some of those types, is you have to be cautious when you keep them that they have a lot of space for the males, a lot of visual barriers for the males, so they don't end up being aggressive with each other. They are known to have squabbles, they are known to fight. Uh, the females are known for their exceptional brood care. Just an awesome, awesome isopod. Somewhat seasonal in their spawning habits. A lot of people talk about that they only breed once a year for them. I, I would probably agree that that's probably true. Uh, this is my whole new generation just growing up. And one of the biggest issues I find with Magnificus is I find a lot of people are quick once they all of a sudden get this explosion of population that they go and sell a bunch off. And uh, the reality is, is you should be making sure that you hold back your next year's culture 
I'm not saying they're short-lived, no shorter lived than a lot of the other species, but uh, because they are seasonal spawners, if you don't hold any back and anything were to happen, you could be out again. So that's one of the reasons that I think Magnificus holds its value longer than, say, some of the other species. Shameless self-promotion. Hey, you guys, if you're enjoying what the Bigs is putting out, maybe consider supporting me. Maybe pick up one of these sweet new shirts that I just listed in the Teespring shop. Show your love for the isopods. Or maybe even consider becoming a member of my channel. Either way, thank you always for watching. Now let's get back to it. And one of my absolute other favorites, as you guys have seen before, the other true giant, the king of isopods, <laughs> the titan isopod, Priscilio Hoffman Sagai. Now I just keep the classic Hoffman Sagai, the standard one. You do see they do throw certain variants. There's a chocolate one there. I know that in this culture, I have not separated them, but this in this culture, I do have white ones as well. Let's see if we can find one. They're in here, because I've seen them multiple times. But so far, I've only seen females that are solid white. There's one. Oh, well, no, that's a male. So now we do know that I have had both sexes. So the nice thing is now is we could actually go and set up a culture and isolate that and see if we could produce solid white Hoffman say guys. There's the one that's kind of a half and half. Awesome, awesome species. The yellow thing, and you might have noticed in some of the other ones, there's orange ones as well, is I had a package of these fruit-flavored cuddle bones. It was a sample, and I just broke it up and threw them in there. So this isn't anything super special. I could see somebody in the comments asking, what is that yellow thing? That's exactly what it is. It's just a fruit-flavored cuddle bone from, I believe, ZooMed. Next up, a perfect starter. Probably one of the best best ones to start with for a lot of people. Very prolific, beautiful. This is Armadillidium maculatum, the true classic zebra isopod. This is the Franz variant, so they do get a fair size compared to the normal maculatum. And this is another culture that you can see is really kind of getting desperate for completely being redone. This will be the first uh, Kubaris species coming up. This is Kubaris species red skirt. And they start off fairly slow. Ho, ho, ho! What's going on here, guys? I can see some of the Dubrovniks have made it out of their enclosure. That's not good. But it tends to happen with isopods sometimes. Thankfully, they're, they're too... Uh, vastly different species so there's no issues whatsoever of uh, crossbreeding i find the the kubaris this particular species very very prolific forming but i also find them as you see extremely darty and really does not like the light so i find them very challenging to get any real good video or film footage when i have the lights on them but as a starter species for Kabaris, yeah, I think they're awesome. Another beautiful Spanish isopod. These ones get a fair size. This is Hassii, Persilio Hassii, high yellow. And these are, this is one of the other three of my original first three species, the Ornatus and the Hoffman Sagai being the other two. They all like it very, very dry compared. As you can see, there's very little moisture in this. Once you dig down a little bit, as you can see, they're enjoying the moss. Once you go down a little bit, they're in that moisture layer. This is one of those tubs that I almost leave. Uh, I, you know, my maintenance is almost every second week. And it's not, it's not just, it, it has tons of, my, of uh, ventilation. Like they have these large vents on the side, the front. Uh, so they have lots of ventilation. But... This is one culture that I like to almost let dry out a little bit. You can't let them dry out completely. These are crustaceans. They do, they do breathe through somewhat like a primitive gills, but uh, they do like it drier than most of the other isopods. This is another Greek species. This is an armadillidium. 
This is armadillidium fronta triangulum. It's kind of different. This is a species I've had for a while, and it started off again with the Dubrovniks. We're going to have to take a look at their, their uh, venting. But hopefully maybe going into the new, new enclosures that we'll be able to prevent all that escaping. I think they're beautiful. Armadillidium fronta triangulum. And without doubt, one of everybody's absolute favorite species of isopod. Probably one of the ones most responsible for the real, real push in their popularity. And that is Cubaris rubber ducky. A beautiful, beautiful, unique species of Cubaris from Asia. Mine are pretty prolific. They take a while to get established. I tend to keep the cultures a lot more moist than I would say the other species. You got the addition of all the different types of limestone and eggshells, limestone chunks. These are actually pieces of uh, bedrock from a uh, saltwater aquarium. So it's all full straight calcium carbonate, but what an absolutely outstanding species. They inhabit limestone caves in Thailand. So you can understand their need for the lots of calcium. Very, very alkaline environments. So these ones, all the Kubara species that inhibit those type of environments, we have to ensure that we're being very, very careful in making sure that we don't get a pH crash. So the addition of cuddle bone, eggshells, limestone, calcium carbonates, and those type of things into the environments will help stabilize the substrate as it changes over time and as the acidity changes over time with the buildup of organics from the creators. This is another one of the brand new species. I brought home three new species less than a few less than a month ago. This is one of them. One of them being that armadillidium uh, Marbleized, and this one is Expansus. Now, Expansus I have had before, and uh, this time we're keeping them drastically different than we have in the past. And we're just going to see how it works out for me. So hopefully we do well with the Expansus. We, time will tell. Here's the next one. This one, is another, this one is brand new to me. This one I was very excited to finally get in my collection. As Wally would say, it's one of the king isopods, one of the five or six species he, he refers to as the king. This one is Bolivari, and it is outstanding. Mine are still fairly young, as you can see by the that male there. This gets nice size. They get right up there in the same sort of size as Hoffman's Sagai. That iridescent sheen, almost that, that underlying translucence kind of shell, carapace. And then that green that's underneath is just striking. And they don't really like the light. <laughs> but it is, I don't think anybody would argue how stunning they are. Corsilio Bolivari. Next up, I wonder if you can guess, just by looking at the enclosure, how much moss, how much moisture there is there, apparent, how, how wet it looks. I wonder what, what, what could be in here. Well, if you guessed a Kubaris, you would be right. This is another one of my Kubaris cultures, and this one happens to be the wonderful Kubaris Lemon Blue. I don't see any babies on that piece. I know there are babies because we've seen them multiple times in here. There's a little one. Don't know why he's sitting here all by himself. 
Oh, there's a bunch down there, too. So he wasn't by himself. Kubaris, Lemon Blue. A little bit less prolific than, say, the duckies for me. They take a little bit longer to establish, but honestly, the care is about the same. But they are very, very striking and very, very well worth the effort. As it stands right now, in Armadillidium, you would be hard-pressed to find another species bigger than these guys. These are Armadillidium gestroi, and they're built like little tanks. And they started off a little bit slow, but I think they've found their groove. And they're not little. Like these are, that's a fairly large isopod. As like most armadillidium species, care is very, very easy. And because of size, this species is very rewarding. Striking coloration, easy to care for, everything you could ask for in an isopod. Next up is a species that uh, we ordered, me and Paisley ordered this one on a European order because we knew we did so well with our regular zebras that we thought, oh, we may as well give it a try. <laughs> and as you can see, they are fairly prolific for us. This is Armadillidium maculatum, the zebra isopod, but this one is the yellow variant. And the only issue with them is not really a negative, it's they just do require a fair bit of culling if you want to maintain that vibrant yellow color. You'll notice several of them in the video here just are not the same. They're not all created equal. Some have more of a greenish cast than yellow, and that would be something that you would want to maintain the integrity through line breeding. proper culling and always maintaining the best, best colors. But they're very, very striking and they're very prolific for us as well. The yellow zebra. This one, you know, as, as popular as it is, as common as it may very well be, is honestly one of my absolute favorite species. I love the uniqueness of the translucence where you can see the colors from below. This is Armadillidium vulgari and this is the one known as Magic Potion. It's such a unique and wonderful name, aptly named for its unique appearance. And as you can see, it's very prolific for me. Not one is the same as the other. They all have that unique patterning. Different speckles of yellow and black popping through their shell. I think they're wonderful. And this one here is from Japan, or the, I'm sorry, it's the Japan line. And I'm told that the, the variance between the Japan line and the US line is that the, the, the definition of all the different types of spotting are just more finer in a lot of the Japanese variants. I don't know, I've never kept the American line, so I really can't compare one to the other, but I think they're wonderful. And the last one for today, maybe I held a couple back, I'm not really telling you, maybe it's a secret. This is another culture that was given to my daughter Paisley from my good friends over at Species Canada. Uh, because you guys may have seen in some of the videos, Paisley, when she helps me, she has that orange plastic isopod, and she calls them orangey. I know, very original. But uh, these are another, like the dairy cows, this is a Porcilio lavis, and this one is the orange variant and they are just as prolific as the dairy cows so hope you enjoyed that my friends it was a quick and dirty kind of get an idea of what kind of isopods we're working with the bulk of our species you know how how the care works you know if you've watched any of the videos like you know let's keep it simple are we doing it right you can see there's not really much to it. This is all their frass, all their waste product is reduced now to dirt. This is the ultimate stuff for your house plants. But each, there's so many of these cultures that are somewhat desperate for being completely reset. So that'll be another video coming up down the road. We'll start resetting some isopods. So until next time, my friends, take care.